These views are used to avoid clutter in your content tree and make working with a large amount of news and blog items a lot more manageable. In this episode, we'll be adding even more content to our website while using the list views to keep a clean structure. And as always, improve on the experience our content editors will have by working in the back office. Oh, and I'll also briefly touch upon the subject of templates, only briefly though. Before we start, let's see what's on the menu. We'll start by creating a document type collection, which we'll use to set up a news area on our website. Then we'll have a look at the benefits of using the list view. Finally, I'll briefly introduce you to the template menu on document types. We'll start by revisiting the options we get when creating a document type. So far, we've used the top one here. You can also choose to create a document type without a related template. And then there's the option to create a document type collection. This is a fast way to create two document types in one task. These two document types will be related. Item document type will automatically be allowed under the parent document type, much like the setup we created with our homepage and text page document types in the previous video. Using the document type collection is especially handy when setting up products pages with multiple products under it, or a news area with several news items. This is also exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. So we'll choose the document type collection. The parent document type we'll call news area. And the item document type will be the news item. Don't worry too much about these checkboxes for the moment. For now, let's create these two. Sweet. If we go to the news area document type and navigate to the permissions menu, we will see that the news item is set as an allowed content type, which is exactly what we want in this case. Before we can create a node using the news area document type, we need to do one thing. We need to allow content of this document type under the home page. So following the workflow from the last video, we'll navigate to the home page on the permission menu, and we'll add child and choose our news area from the box. Let's save it. Now all we need are some groups and properties on the document types, as well as some content. Since you already know the flow of adding properties and creating content, I will go ahead and put some together and get back to you here once it's done. I'm back and I've now created some additional content on our website. We have a news area here under the front page node. Now notice the icon here next to the news area content node has a little blue indicator. This means that the document type that this content node is based on has list view enabled. So let's have a closer look. As you can see, we're now presented with all the news items I've created under the news area. It's presented on a separate menu, the child items menu. You can either have them show up in a grid like this, or you can change the layout to a more traditional list view. You can still find and update the content for the news area node by navigating to the content menu up here. Now let's open the news area document type real quick and have a look at how this list view is set up. So there's a menu up here called list view. Right now the list view is enabled. Let's see what happens if we disable it. So we'll save and close. So first thing we notice is that there's no longer a child items menu up here. And if we reload the content tree, our news items are now presented in a list under the news area in the content tree. As you may notice, this list could quickly become unmanageable as we grow our news article collection on the website, and that's where list views come in handy. When you enable the list view, you have a few options. Let's take a look at those real quick. So we'll enable it again. So we can either choose to use the default list view, or we can customize our own list view. Customizing is covered in a later chapter. For the time being, know we have options to update settings, such as how many items are shown per page, how the items are ordered, which columns should be presented in the view, and so forth. Again, you have full control over how things are structured and presented to your content editors. The final thing I want to cover in this video 
is the templates menu all the way to the top right here. When we've created document types throughout this chapter, a template file has been generated along with them. You can find them in the templates folder in the tree to the left here. Templates will be covered in full detail in the next chapter, so I won't spend too much time on this menu now. Keep in mind that document types can be associated with more than one template. The related templates are shown here in the templates menu. This is also where you can add other allowed templates to be used for the document type. But as I mentioned, don't focus too much on this now. It will all be covered in the next chapter about templates. So that was it for this video. Let's do a quick review. We saw how document type collections can be used to create two document types in one task. The list view is used to avoid clutter and improve on the task of managing multiple content nodes of the same type. Finally, we briefly talked about the templates menu and how one document type can be associated with more than one template. In the next chapter, we'll talk more about structure as we'll cover how to use folders and compositions. See you there.